everyone. Welcome to Studio Sunday. We hope everyone is healthy and safe and hanging in there. Mm -hmm. Wow, it's getting old. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I hope everyone's wearing their mask and staying home as much as possible. We're in Houston and things here are not good. We're in the red zone. So um, we're having to really hunker down again. Yeah. And they've started closing. Uh, all the bars are closed and the restaurants are back to 50%. So they're uh, really trying to contain it here. Um, it's just crazy. It's like the minute things began opening up, people lost their minds. Yeah, like, yeah, it's over. It was like a hurricane coming through. They thought, well, it's over now uh -huh. and we can come out. But it's not over and it won't be over until we have a vaccine. So anyway, just be mindful of the people around you and please wear a mask. It's not political. It's kindness and concern for friends and loved ones. Look at it that way. You are helping save people from either just getting sick or dying. So, okay. I saw a new uh, saying on the internet yesterday. It was mask it or casket. Well, that's a little dramatic. <laughs> <laughs> that's how we work on Twitter. <laughs> Gosh. Let's hope it doesn't come to that. Oh, no. <laughs> okay. I have to tell you, though, I'm really missing our people. As the conventions got canceled early on, I was okay with it because I could catch up on all my work. But now as the weeks have dragged on, I really miss the shows. We're lonely. I know. It's just us. We miss you. I mean, come on. Yeah. How often can you stare at me? <laughs> A lot, actually. <laughs> Thankfully. So we miss seeing everybody. So maybe we should do, some, uh, do another live show in the maybe sometime in July. Yeah, like um, do something around when everybody would be going out to San Diego, maybe. Maybe, yeah. yeah. We'll figure it out. Maybe we'll do a live thing and you guys can respond so we can actually know that there are living, breathing people out there. <laughs> you are out there, right? <laughs> so, okay. It's like a sci-fi movie. I know. We're on the moon base. Um, okay, oh, what's God. going on in the studio this week? Uh, the retail version of Five Years came out. Mm -hmm. So pick that up if you haven't read it. It's the final issue. And I've been getting a lot of uh, response about that, that people are kind of upset that it's the last issue. Like, it should have gone on, Mr. Moore. I've been getting a lot of responses like, oh my gosh, the ending. Wow. Well, and, and you get people saying, uh, why don't we do more? So, but you know, it's over. It, it is all one long story anyway. I mean, whatever I do next is going to have probably have some sort of... I can't just walk away from my characters so but I do want to do something really fresh and new for the next project it's not it's not gonna be six years <laughs> <laughs> okay well anyway that's in the stores this uh, came in the stores this week so look for it if you haven't already gotten it and okay. we turned in the revised how to draw to the printer this week so we're happy about that that needed the revising that we did we really updated it it was uh, first one came out in 2012 and it read like it so yeah. we improved it a lot and I added new chapters yeah that was nice so yeah. we have uh, that'll be coming out in July no from, August it's coming out in August it expanded from 128 to 160 but we yeah. talked about that last week yeah um, Terry sent his interview in for San Diego Comic-Con at home That's um, true. and that panel will air on July 23rd at 1 p.m. so mark your calendars for that yeah just as if we were all there and evidently comic-con at home is going to have a retail store for um, exhibitors and so we'll put a couple of things in there uh, and offer some kind of incentive for you um, during the comic-con time so that starts I think that was going to be like July let me look here maybe July 20 second through the 26th. She's looking at her calendar on the wall. <laughs> so, uh, the master planner. So it'll be during that time. Anyway, we'll talk more about it as it gets closer. Okay, what about all these boxes right here that we see in frame? What's well, we're going gonna on? finish those up this week. Those are the Art Nouveau, Nouveau portfolios going out. Yes, our orders. Yeah, that's just some that we did yesterday for a few minutes and we're gonna do some more today and then we'll finish it up tomorrow. Uh -huh, the orders. So um, we're shipping them out. Don't forget they do require a signature for delivery. Uh, we do have some available, so you can go to the website to order. Uh, we'll also begin working on the Five Years Omnibus this week. We will be offering an abstract studio version. Mm -hmm. um, 
So watch that coming in the next couple of weeks for pre-orders. Um, I have a question for you guys. So, you know, in the past, pre-orders received a signed print. Um, it was kind of a perk. I have a question. Would you rather have the signed print or would you rather have lower shipping costs uh, as the pre-order perk? So if you guys mm -hmm. will respond uh, in the remarks on this YouTube video or you can email me at mail at abstractstudiocomics.com. Um, let me know. what We've done it both ways, and it doesn't seem to make a difference for people ordering, but I would like to do what they would prefer. Um, just let me know okay. what you guys think, and, um, and I'll take a look at those, and we'll make a decision here in the next couple of weeks before we put the pre-orders out. Um, what else this week? I'm making limoncello. <laughs> she makes great limoncello. I feel like I'm, I'm drinking it like lemonade these days, so I need to calm down on that. But <laughs> but I did order a stationary bike for the uh, studio, which should be here tomorrow. So you could drink more limoncello. I could be drinking limoncello while riding the stationary bike. Uh, could this could be a that. fun job. Yeah, I mean, hey, all, all bets are off now. We make our own rules. That's right. <laughs> So you'll see an exercise bike here next week instead of these boxes. <laughs> <laughs> so do you have anything else to add to that? Uh, man, you kind of covered my whole week right there. No? Nope. That's it, huh? Yeah. Okay. I, I took the my little mini out for an errand the other yesterday, and everybody's driving crazy out there, so be careful when you go out driving. Only the crazy people are out, and they drive crazy. Okay, well, then it's hot seat time. Okay. Okay. The first question is from Leonard, and he says, I'm from Alaska and love the scenarios in Echo and Strangers in Paradise, which involved elements of Alaska. My question is, have you ever been? No, never been to Alaska. We've but talked about going. We've talked about going, before, and I love before watching. Before everything, before all the glaciers melt, we want to get over there. I, I, I watched Ice Road Truckers. <laughs> what is that? And it's about the guys, the people who have to drive the trucks uh, up in the north by the Arctic Circle and make deliveries to the all the different factories and the logging and everything up there. Ice roll truckers very dangerous. But um, oh my, I don't want to do that. No, no, you don't want to do that. It takes no. nerves of steel. I couldn't do it. I'd be like, <laughs> uh, but I, I I love Alaska. I love the frontier and all that. So I was fascinated with it, and that's why it's in the story. Well, maybe we, uh, when things open up, we'll have to do that maybe next summer. Yeah, yeah go research it and end up, no telling what kind of story I could end up with if I was actually there seeing it. Okay, our next question is regard, kind of regarding all of your series. I've noticed that almost every series is in a different genre. It seems most writers stick to one or two genres. What led you to try so many different ones? Good question. I, mostly because I'm interested in each uh, genre. Um, I read a lot of relationship stories. I read a lot of horror. I read a lot of science science fiction and detective novels. You put all that together, and you get my catalog. Um, I what I'm not sure about is what the next genre would be. I still I have a lot of drawings and ideas and notes about things that are more fantasy, uh, which actually would be more all ages. I think more approachable. But I have. For some reason, I haven't been brave enough to, to, to pursue it. I don't think, I don't think you, well, I don't know. Good luck to you. <laughs> That's all I can say. <laughs> that was not encouraging. <laughs> Maybe no fantasy stories in the beginning. Oh, gosh. Okay, I need questions, guys, uh, for Studio Sunday, or I'm going to have to start asking Terry really personal ones, like what's he going to get me for my birthday? Or why won't he eat leftovers? We don't need we don't need to hear the answers to those. So send me some questions. I have very good excuses for all of them. To mail at abstractstudiocomics.com. Okay. Co so, okay, so that's it for me. I hope everyone has a safe and happy Fourth of July. In this house, that that means grilling out and having root beer floats are once a year big treat. Nice. So um, so we're looking forward to that. So what are you drawing this week? Uh, I'm working on a drawing of uh, Francine and Kachu, and there's going to be a third person in the background, and this person won an auction uh, that benefited Black Lives Matter, and they get their likeness in this drawing. But I'm working on the Francine and Kachu part, 
So I thought maybe you would like to peek over my shoulder and watch me draw uh, my two favorite characters in this pencil drawing. So if you want to watch me draw this, meet me here. Okay. All right. Okay, so what I'm doing today is I'm going to draw this uh, picture of Francine and Cachou in the garden. And I'm doing their kind of dressed Art Nouveau. I'm drawing this uh, for the winner of an auction for Black Lives Matter. Um, Gail Simone put together an auction on Twitter called Comic Writers Challenge and people donated um, their, their best art, their best pages uh, to raise funds. And she raised a lot of money. So I had two people bidding for this drawing um, that I had previously done. And this gentleman won the bidding, and then there was a lady who was right there with him, you know, da 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 on the bidding. And um, so he got the drawing, and I added him into the drawing. That was part of the deal. And then I, she agreed to let me draw the same, same picture, but one minute later. You know, that one minute later category of fun art stuff. So if you compare the two, you'll see that... Uh, you know, Francine is picking up a rose, and this one in here, the rose has made it to her, uh, where she's sniffing it. And Kachu is looking that way, and then this one she's kind of turned, holding the bird feeder, um, and the birds are coming in. And then instead of this gentleman here, there'll be the other winner standing on Kachu's shoulder um, with the bird feeder. So that's what I'm doing today. That's what I'm doing. I've got this way up here. You probably can't see it. I'm sorry. Um, that's what I'm doing. Not only did the um, winner um, get this pencil drawing, the money got so high that I agreed to also ink it, do an inked version. So um, I, I light boxed the drawing onto here and then added to it, you know, out to the left and up to the top and, and the details in the flowers and all that, and added the winner in the background. That was part of it. Um, in the period dress, this is like they're dressed 1900, so. He's got his 1900 dead zone. Um, so it was really, that was, a, that was an honor to be doing this for such a great cause. You get very motivated. And now I'm going to uh, draw this uh, same garden and it's one minute later. So I have, basically I have outlined Francine. And now I'm just making sure that the measurements are right on the limbs. Like that, that arm was too short. If you make the arm short, it makes the person look short because people are judging your, if they can't see below your waist, they can look at your arms and tell if you have long or short arms and that just kind of tells them how tall you are or gives them a clue. Short people have shorter arms. Francine is supposed to be about 5'10". So that's more of a five. I'd lower, I'd lengthen that arm to here from there. If her arm was that long, I would say she was five feet, five in, four inches, and seven eighths and three quarters of a half. But that elbow down there, oh yeah, definitely five ten. Uh, I'm about to, about to grab for my eraser. This is that uh, paper thing that I made. I just uh, crinkled up paper and then glued it to a piece of board. And I use it to hold hold all the different um, micron pen levels. You know, like uh, you can see the labeling there. The, z the 005, the 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, and the 1. But when I'm not inking, uh, I can put my erasers in there. So I've got my little, little tip eraser, the one I really use a lot. And then here is a number 4, 0 .04, 0 .4, 0 .04 pencil. I like this pencil. It's heavy, but it's from it's Japan, and um, so it's made fantastic. Made like a Lexus or something. Um, I trust everything from Japan, and um, this is what I'm actually using to draw right now because um, I can get the more variety in line weights, which is good just for rough sketching and and uh, polishing. There's the back three-quarter view of a rose and long stemmed. How she got that stem cut, I don't know because I don't see any shears. 
I've learned to add that little niche in uh, flowers. Um, where, where can you put another flower appropriately? Maybe, maybe not another one. Let's leave it alone. Okay, so now I'm trying to see past this cloth. I know this cloth is here. And I'm trying to see the body. If I, I always tend to draw too small um, when I'm getting into the top torso and then the torso length, I, I tend to go too small and it makes it look like the head's too big. <laughs> so I have learned that about myself and I've started correcting it before it gets too far. I don't want this to look inappropriate, so I'm going to pull that back a little bit. So now I'm just trying to see where am I with things here. If I just cover her in draped cloth and guess at where things are, I'll get a proportion wrong somewhere and it'll show. Okay, so there's the basic proportion. Um, chest, uh, belly button right about there, and then uh, crotch. So at least now I have enough to hang off, to hang this heavy cloth. I, it's and if everything I'm what I'm going to do is have everything hang off this pendant right here. There's a pendant on her neck, and it's going to have these you know Art Nouveau chains like this. Uh, pendant there, cloth hangs here, cloth hangs here, comes back, and now I know where the backside is. I know that there is there is no binding in here, so this hangs straight down. But to keep from looking like there is always a pull there. So there. Okay, now <coughs> sorry, now that I have the outline, I can go in and get rid of the search the searching lines, right? Can you see? Yes. There's that, and here's the pendant hanging. And then, to make things complicated, she has this wrap, which actually has stars on it. I, I don't know why, but um, Mucha, Alphonse Mucha, the uh, Art Nouveau master from 1900, he, he liked these stars. He liked these uh, six-point stars. Um, I put them on there. That reminds me of the, the robe on Cheech Wizard which is an underground comic that I laughed at in high school. Um, so this cloth is heavy. This side on the other side of the arm, I know it's going to come back like that. I know that's going to come back like that. It's going to have a thick fold here over her elbow. Now I'm looking past the elbow. I'm looking like an x-ray machine, like, okay, Thick cloth going that way. Drape. And then up the arm a little bit for the rest of it that couldn't all fit in the fold of the elbow. And if it's heavy, it hangs straight, straight down like that. If it puffs out, it's lighter. So you have to decide, is it a heavy cloth or is it, you know, sheer linen? This one's kind of heavy. So I'm going to have to wait, pull it down like that. And then it's going to be over here. And then if she moves forward, the bottom will drag on the ground like that. See, um, so now it looks heavier. Uh, her, uh, what is this? I don't, it's not a, it's not a dress. It's a tunic. So her tunic is lightweight. Get rid of that, that's not really there. There's always an embarrassing line somewhere. Like if somebody's watching you draw, picture your mom standing here watching you draw and then you see there's these embarrassing things over here and you think, I didn't put it there, I don't know how it got there. That was part of the searching drawing. There is the back guy, the rose. I'll color it just so I know what that is. And then these lines on left on the arm. This was all about this guy here. And what I'm referring to is uh, in Art Nouveau, you would have this heavy jewelry. 
Uh, and then there would be these little delicate chains, gold or silver chains that would connect it all. And, you know, having two on each side is conservative. I mean, Mooka sometimes would draw six, like four on one side and two on the other, and then they never had to match, and that was part of the beauty is you look at the different chain designs. So I'm not going to get into that detail right now. I don't even know if I can salvage my drawing, so I'm just going to put lines that show, you know, the other one is right there. So I'm going to put lines that show where this is going to go. The clasp on this uh, big medallion, which is right there. The clasp is right there. And I'll probably put another one out here. Just because, you know, I have the room. And then I picture this clasp here. And it hangs just above and between um, there. <laughs> And that allows me to, um, it'll, it'll, you know it'll have these uh, folds here. And it'll be fuller there, so it'll be very attractive and feminine without actually showing, um, you know, without actually pandering to the form. There. Now I have Francine standing uh, with a heavy robe on her arm and a light uh, tunic on and she's going to have jewelry and she's smelling that and a little Japanese motif up here. So that's that. I, in the meantime, I erased my little flower that was in the foreground because I knew I could come back like this, put it back in there. Notice that I did not follow the exact lines that were there before because it's my drawing. I'm the artist. If I erase it, I'll just redraw it. And if it doesn't match, I'm okay with that. I'm the guy who's saying, this is what the flower really looked like. Oh, it was six-point flower before? I'm sorry. Now it's a four-point flower. That's what I meant to draw. And it's going to have all those little things there that attract the bees. When I get into drawing flowers, I really have to slow down and just feel like I'm in the garden enjoying looking at stuff and um, if you're the kind of person that likes to uh, go out in the garden and make the flowers feel safe and welcome then you would enjoy drawing flowers because what I'm doing is actually going over every single part of this wonderful organic thing um, the leaves and the, the buds and everything and now you kind of get into it, you know, and I think, well, I think I'll just put a little ladybug right there, you know, and you start hiding things in here. And later on, when people are looking at your drawing, like it's finished, they just start staring. Maybe, um, maybe they've had an, a little too much to drink or something and they're calm and they're just staring at your drawing and they'll notice for the first time ever, um, oh, look. Down here in the flowers, it says Black Lives Matter. I didn't see that for the first two weeks that I own this drawing. Um, and then you come over here and you start searching the ground and so what else can you find? Oh, there's a butterfly on the rock, you know. So you hide little things in here, you know. And that's because you're taking your time and you're drawing it, you know. Um, I hid even more stuff in the ink drawing because it gets very dense in here and there's a lot of places to hide bugs and things like that. and even the obvious stuff, people might not see that for a day. Um, you know, they'll look at this bird and, you know, that kind of thing. So it's nice to have something to see in the art on the second and third viewing that you didn't just see it one time and got it. I, yeah, I got it. I don't, I don't need to see it again. Um, it's nice to have something to come back to and, and revisit and look at it again and again. I kind of think that that's something that... Um, uh, things that end up with reputations, art that ends up with a reputation. Oh, you know, this is an iconic piece for this person. Um, maybe that's the kind of stuff that is. It either makes a bold, quick statement, or it's something you can get lost in, um, capture the world. I just drew the, her hand in a way that there's no way it can hold the flower that was meant to be there. I didn't care. I just wanted the hand to look right. So what I'm going to do is now put... She is holding 
three leaves. Three leaves seems to be symbolic of uh, a lot of things throughout time. Um, so especially if they're these kind of leaves, e eucalyptus or palm or whatever, <laughs> or one of those green things, um, there's a lot of symbolism of uh, coming peace and things like that. So. Learning how to draw the hand from angles, um, like I'm looking at it now from a forward angle, but the hand is there is bent at the wrist. The arm is going this way, the hand bent back towards me this way, and I'm looking at it um, where I, I'll be able to see the palm, both mounds of the palm behind the fingers. Um, so you have to be able to envision that 3D hand. Picture that wooden hand that you see in the art store and you know how you would move it and you know, turn it and all that. You just have to think 3D for yourself when you get in there. I could go get that hand, I guess, or I could try to photograph my hand. I used to do stuff like that. Um, very time consuming. But uh, if you're not getting it and it's driving you crazy, do it. Get the reference you need. Or decide, you know what? I don't think we need to see their hand. I think for some reason there's a tree right there. <laughs> They have their hand behind them. It's it's holding a weapon. She's about to attack. Okay, it's as dirty as it is, a lot of extra pencil lines and everything in here. This is what I will be polishing up. Uh, Francine, Kachu, and then I'll add the the winner of this drawing over here. But this is how I sketch it out and uh, get started on a on the drawing. And after about two more hours of polishing and cleaning, I'll, it'll look like this. So, draw, draw, draw. Just keep working on it until you get what you want, right? All right, you guys have a good week. I'll talk to you later. Be careful out there.